my name is Akiva Goldman, and I'm an attorney with Goldman and Associates. And what happens if you want to get divorced, but you don't know where your spouse is? Now, in a situation like that, there's a couple things you got to uh, look to. First of all, the question is, how long has your spouse been at large? Okay. Obviously, if you're in a situation where you're not sure where your spouse is, but she or he's only been gone for a week or two, you know, they may be up north with buddies. They may, they may be uh, developing their own self-imposed cooling off period. They may be with family somewhere. So if it's a short period of time, it's probably best to wait on it to determine that because you, you obviously want to be able, if you're going to start a case, you want to be able to serve the person. And the best way to serve them is obviously if you know where they are. Um, the question comes up very often though, we'll get a call like this. Say, hi, Mr. Goldman, I, I want to talk to you about getting divorced. Uh, I haven't seen my husband in 15 years. Well, that, that's a whole other story. That's literally the needle in the haystack because if you don't know where he's been for 15 years, we got to serve him. How are we going to do that? The good news is that the court is not going to prevent you from getting divorced just because your spouse is at large. There are mechanisms set up within the court rules to address this very issue. I guess the first thing in, a, in the scenario that I described is you got to figure out, uh, is the guy alive? If he's dead, we don't need a divorce. So the first thing we would probably try to do is look on the web, uh, 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 put, put his information in, and see if there's an obituary for, for him. Assuming that he's still alive, what we try to do is serve him at his last known address. We would do postal checks and other checks uh, to determine where that might have been. Once you have tried, made diligent effort to do this, and uh, you have been unsuccessful, then what can happen is you can apply to the court for substituted service by motion, and you can ask the court to allow you to serve the other person by <coughs> artificial means. Artificial means could mean a lot of things. It could mean uh, posting the uh, uh, documents, tacking it to the door of his last known address. It could mean, uh, in some uh, scenarios, serving him electronically. It could mean posting in the legal news uh, that the summons and complaint. That's really a fallacy because, to be frank, people don't read the, read the legal news. Uh, lawyers don't read the legal news, okay? So to post in the legal news to get someone's attention, you're being sued, it's really uh, form over substance. But it is one of the methods that the court often uses to alert someone through a legal posting that they're being sued for divorce. Um, if you do those methods, and what happens is the court will make you do it multiple times over several weeks. Once you do that, you are, file a proof of service that you comply with the court, and the court views it as if the person was served. Same as if he was handed the papers by a bailiff. And then the clock starts ticking. Uh, once the clock starts ticking, there's a certain amount of time within which uh, the person will respond. Of course, he or she will not respond because, like I said, they're not reading the legal news. Not likely that they'll respond, and when that happens, the court will enter a clerk's entry of default and ultimately invite you to prevent a judgment of divorce by virtue of default. Um, if you need assistance with that or you have any questions about that, of course, reach out to us and we'll be glad to help you out.